came to um, contact uh, with our research institute and um, because they were in need of knowledge about um, uh, two shad species, uh, Aloza aloza and Aloza phallax, um, mainly Aloza aloza because that was the uh, historically uh, most valuable um, shad species that was exploited. Uh, and um, so um, all of my colleagues in, uh, on this slide are involved in, in the project from different uh, research institutes. Uh, but we, we have built uh, the project in uh, very close um, uh, coordination with NGOs and management uh, agencies in France. So, um, so just to show you uh, the, um, the site, so it's within the, the southwestern uh, part of France, uh, so it, this is a this was a, a regional uh, based demand, uh, but uh, we try to expand uh, the research to further rivers across France and, and even along the Atlantic when the topic was necessary. But it's mainly um, uh, dealing with. Uh, uh, Three river basins uh, within the most south southern part here. Uh, well, I won't show you that. Uh, uh, well, we are dealing with two two uh, very close uh, shad species, Aloza and Aloza, uh, Aloza, Aloza and Aloza phallax, are very close genetically, and they have a long history of. Um, of genetic diver diversion and, and intrusion. And uh, they were both exploited, but as I said, uh, uh, the biggest fish with uh, less scales were more exploited. I guess what? <laughs> why? And um, so uh, the, the major focus of interest of managers are the <coughs> Alice Chat, Aloza Aloza. And um, th these. Um, Aloza Aloza uh, suffered from from a, a collapse uh, in the in the major um, river basin, where which, which used to be historically one of the the most abundant basin in in Europe. So um, the, this this led to uh, the the story is repeating everywhere, and it's the same story of uh, same in Sapidissima. And uh, so uh, after, after the collapse, um, which was, um, as you say, uh, you have a, a baseline uh, that was established in the 80s, but probably back in history, the numbers were even bigger and bigger. But uh, the number of spawners were uh, de decreased by a magnitude of, uh, of to uh, 100 times, and uh, there was a, a moratorium of, on a fish ban uh, that had been going on for, for 10 years before uh, we, we started the research project. And um, so the, 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 um, there was two, two, two issues that the managers wanted to address. Uh, the first issue is uh, why why the population is not recovering <coughs> after a ten year of fishing ban, and the the second question was what can we do, and uh, uh, is is the are are the population going to recover, and so in this context we we uh, we we built a research project trying to compromise be between the demand uh, that was really locally based and uh, a need for more generic issues to understand, to get a greater picture than the local picture. So the, the initial um, 
quarries were centered on the freshwater stage where uh, in, in uh, the river basin there's, there is all the, pre the pressures you have been describing at the, the introduction of, of this session. Plus, um, there is a historical uh, exploitation of uh, a gravel mining inside the riverbed. And because uh, it was done right after the gravel mining uh, damage, uh, the, the sediments never recovered. And so this, this caused a, um, a long suite of cascade effects. And one of them is that uh, um, the estuarine gradient lift up upstream and there is a there is a maximum turbidity zone that increased much more, and uh, there is a there is a concern on the quality of egg larvae and juvenile freshwater habitats that is linked to this mud plug, but also to the can the contamination uh, and uh, because as you described also there was an intensification of agriculture um, along the major rivers, and as you may know, France is uh, one of these country that is consuming most pesticides and, and these kind of things. So uh, it, it goes back into the river somehow. And um, there was uh, also a long history of, uh, of communication between science and management at this advisory board, <coughs> where we are just observers, but we uh, are uh, we often uh, present our results there, and we we talk to each other for we've been talking to each other for a long time. Um, so there was also uh, a suspicion of um, more mortality pressure uh, at sea. Uh, with a, a conflict between freshwater fishery and marine fishery, and a suspicion of a uh, bycatch that would be more targeted catch than uh, was, uh, you know, said. And uh, the, all this was set up in a context of political preference for restocking programs, as uh, when there is no fish in the river, uh, what can we do? We can put more fish into the river. Um, so this, this took uh, nearly two years to settle, and uh, we continuously made this trade-off between uh, the very local questions and uh, the need for understanding a bigger picture. And um, so uh, also we pushed very much so we could include Phalax into the project because initially it was targeted only on the most valuable species for commercially. Um, so this this resulted in a <coughs> collaborative research project that that was uh, planned from 2017 to 2021, and uh, there were. Uh, three research teams involved in, uh, in the project. And to give you uh, a, a rough overview of the size of the project, this project is including five PhD projects and two postdoctorate -doc projects. And um, it, it's roughly a, a two million euro project. And uh, it was mostly funded by the research institutes plus uh, the um, water agency, the local water agency, and uh, the local uh, regional government, so uh, really a local based uh, demand, original. Uh, so that's the partners, so the research partners <coughs> and uh, the management and uh, partners that are partly river basin uh, committees, uh, NGOs, for diadromous uh, fish uh, uh, protection and uh, fisheries like commercial and uh, recreative and um, also uh, the hydropower uh, 
company. Uh, the, the, the project is structured uh, with a set of research actions that are um, uh, organized by biological processes, so mostly by life stage and also by uh, habitat continuum. So uh, it's a life stage per habitat kind of uh, structure. Uh, I will go through this very rapidly. Uh, okay, so uh, there's a, a half of the picture is lacking, but uh, I'm going to explain this. So the um, the research actions are following the life cycle of the of the the sheds. So there's a, there's a, the first action is dealing with a. Uh, the shed reproduction issues, so that's the behavior, uh, like uh, the bull behavior. Uh, uh, do they they repeat spawning, or like are they spawning once, or these kind of issues? Um, the the spawner uh, the spawning areas quality, uh, specifically uh, um, uh, more the the contamination issues. And uh, also, uh, in this context, there's uh, hybridization issues because uh, below dams, fish were forced to share uh, spawning areas. Uh, they were separated in, in the past, and um, that caused a lot of issues for the managers because they, they want to manage the most valuable one, and they don't want to have a, a back cross of a fish, but they, they, they don't want hybrids. Uh, another action about uh, juvenile stage, uh, growth phase at sea, and uh, actions that are um, across the whole life cycle, like uh, metapopulation dynamics, uh, and also climate change, and uh, issues of uh, um, distribution shifts. This, and my colleagues uh, Pat Patrick Lambert and Camille Poulet will talk uh, about this uh, later, and uh, also uh, actions about uh, management issues such as uh, the economy of recreational fishery, which in France is uh, not used, uh, didn't used to be well studied and is not well um, uh, observed. So that was uh, this is growing bigger. So that this had the. Um, research action, and also reference points, uh, definition for advisory boards. Uh, I will go through this quickly. Uh, so, so there's a more, um, uh, the, the actions are details here. Um, if you want further information, I, I, I can answer to this later on. Um, just to take to take more time to talk about the first results, we are in the process where we starting to release uh, the first uh, results. And uh, there are there are article. There is one article released, and the others are in preparation, roughly. And um, so uh, I take the opportunity to to talk about. Um, uh, the work of uh, Alexis Pommier, uh, uh, Patrick Lambert is supervising the PhD. You, we, you can have a look at the poster in the in the other room. Uh, it's dealing about um, how shad our phenology is adapted or not to global warming uh, effects, and uh, uh, there's a distribution of uh, of. Um, Shad at sea by uh, bycatch uh, data analysis. There's a uh, autolyte chemistry to understand the, the stock mixing at sea before the collapse. Uh, there's a juvenile migration uh, consider uh, comparison between uh, the 80s and contemporary situation. And uh, th this I I uh, take a few uh, minutes to talk about is uh, in this project we try to make a dissemination of the results in a different ways as just uh, a scientific communications and uh, we
we, t we took the opportunity of the project to um, combine art and science to uh, uh, provide um, uh, dissemination uh, in, other, in other ways. And uh, I was involved in the art and science project where we, uh, we followed the Shad juvenile migration from the spawning grounds to the estuary with a, uh, it was called light expedition because we were uh, kayaking for 13 days along the river and I was uh, taking um, uh, data with uh, a monitoring and also passive uh, um, uh, pa passive samples to get the contamination loads and, and temperature, turbidity and uh, primary productivity, and uh, uh, there were two uh, artists involved that were that created a uh, uh, different uh, piece of art that were displayed and uh, uh, in different ways. And one of the of the um, of this resulted in uh, a poetry piece that was uh, printed in the bottom of a, a huge swimming pool that is uh, attracting uh, uh, two or 3,000 people per week. And uh, it, you can read the story of Shad while you're swimming along the lines. So to d discover the world text, you have to um, go through the swimming pool in all the lines. And uh, it, it's, it's not as in intimate, um, uh, encounter as uh, going in the wild and seeing a fish, but it's the first step for urban population to uh, um, feel like a shad and understand a bit more what is a shad uh, feeling, and uh, maybe to uh, um, encourage people to go further in this kind of knowledge. Um, so um, that that's a um, we, we have other, other kind of initiatives, but uh, uh, that will be all for now. And I thank you for your attention. And uh, yeah, I, I can take a couple of questions if you want. If there's time. Thank you. 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 Thank you.